Exodus 12, verses 1 to 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth month, tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share it with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be one-year-old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Uh, take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames where they eat the lambs. Uh, the same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water, but roast it over a fire with the head, legs, and internal organs. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked in your, into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both the people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate for generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. Exodus 12, 1 through 14, God bless the reading of his word. God appears to Moses in a burning bush at Midian. He is looking after sheep for his father-in-law Jethro. I have heard the cries of my people Israel in Egypt. I will send you and your brother Aaron to ask for the release of my people Israel from Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Moses and Aaron arrive in Egypt and show the signs that God has asked them to show to Pharaoh. Aaron throws God's shepherd staff on the ground. It turns into a snake. Pharaoh's magicians also throw their staffs on the ground. They too turn into snakes. Aaron's snake eats up all of Pharaoh's snakes. This sets the stage for the confrontation between Moses and Pharaoh, between Israel and Egypt. It is like war. Pharaoh is against Israel, the slaves of Egypt. We read Exodus 12 today. In Exodus 8 to 10, we read how Pharaoh hardens his heart against God. Pharaoh stubbornly refuses to let Israel go. The God of Israel demonstrates his might. He then sends nine plagues in Egypt. He turns the river Nile into blood. He then sends the plague of frogs, the plague of gnats, the plague of flies, the plague of death to Egypt's livestock, the plague of boils, the plague of hail, the plague of locusts, and then the three days of darkness. Even with all these plagues, Pharaoh remains stubborn. We can imagine what the land of Egypt looks like after these plagues. It looks like a war zone. It is the tenth plague that is most gruesome of the plagues. To protect Israel, this is what Moses tells the people of Israel to do. Each hole is to take a lamb for themselves. The lamb must be a one-year-old male without defect. Exodus 12 verse 5. They are to slaughter that lamb at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. Exodus 12 verse 7. And this is what the Lord says further to Moses. On the same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals. And I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. 
No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. Exodus 12, 12 to 13. So the God of the burning bush does what he says he will do. At midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on the throne, to the firstborn of the prisoner who was in the dungeon, to the firstborn of all the livestock as well. Pharaoh and all his officials and all the Egyptians got up during the night. There was a loud wailing in Egypt, for there was not a house without someone dead. Exodus 12, 29-30 The difference between homes that experience death and the homes that do not experience death is the blood of that one-year-old lamb without defect on the doorpost of that home. The lamb is sacrificed to save the firstborn son of that family. Today is Remembrance Sunday. Today is also Communion Sunday. We remember how Jesus dies on the cross for us as it is Communion Sunday. We also remember how our Canadian military dedicated their lives for Canada during the wars of the past. Ever since God called me to serve as a pastor in our church family, I have referred to those two lists uh, that are at the back of our sanctuary every Remembrance Sunday. Our church family honours those who have served in World War I and World War II. There are two men from our church family who gave their lives for Canada in World War I. One was killed in action February 25, 1917. Uh, the other was killed in action October 7, 1917. Both their families used to worship and fellowship here in our church facilities. They received the bread and the cup on Communion Sundays. They answered the call to defend Canada. They did, sacrificed their lives for Canada. They sacrificed their lives for us. So did their families. Their families were part of our bigger large church family, uh, our bigger church family, uh, worshiping here during World War One. Pharaoh and his magicians can handle the first nine plague God sends. They are stubborn and still feel that they can hang on to keeping Israel as slaves in Egypt. Their land becomes a war zone. The final plague that changes their minds. Um, uh, it is the final plague that changes their minds. Pharaoh and the many Egyptian households lose their firstborn sons during the Passover. Uh, in Exodus 11, Moses warns Pharaoh about the possible deaths of their firstborn. Uh, Pharaoh and his people choose to ignore Moses. If you read the book of Exodus, which is the second book in the Old Testament, you will find that the death of baby boys do not start at the Passover in Exodus 12. In Exodus 1, the baby boys of Israel are killed by Pharaoh and the people of Egypt. Death is real in Egypt during this time of confrontation between Israel and Pharaoh. On this Remembrance Day, we pause to remember those who gave their lives for their country. We also remember that as the book of Exodus reminds us, human beings are capable of violence and war. This causes the death of loved ones. That is why we must remember the sacrifice of many who gave their lives for peace on Remembrance Sunday. We must also pray to God for peace and understanding in the world. Exodus 12, 5-7. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. Exodus 12, 5-7. A one-year-old male lamb without physical defect is to be killed. The blood of the lamb is placed on the sides 
uh, and tops uh, of the door frames. When God sees the blood on the sides and tops of the door frames, God passes over the home and will not kill the firstborn son of that household. The blood of the Passover lamb saves that household from doom. According to the Gospel of Luke, Jesus is born into the world just after his distant cousin, John the Baptist, is born. John the Baptist becomes a famous preacher in the desert. One day he sees Jesus coming. The next day he saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Gospel of John 1 verse 29. Why does John call his distant cousin Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? Later, John says this about Jesus. I have seen and testified that this is God's chosen one. John 1 verse 34. Why does John the Baptist call Jesus God's chosen one? If Jesus is God's chosen one, he must be precious to God. John the Baptist suspects this when he calls Jesus God's chosen one, God's precious one. Jesus is chosen by God to be God's Passover lamb in the New Testament. Later, the Apostle Peter, the leader of the Twelve Apostles, the followers of Jesus Christ, describe Jesus Christ in terms of the ultimate Passover lamb. 1 Peter 1, 18-19 For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. 1 Peter 1, 18-19 Like the Passover lamb in the Old Testament, Peter makes a reference to Jesus as a lamb without blemish or defect. Peter also tells his readers that this lamb of God, without blemish or defect, is precious. He is precious because he is God's chosen one. He is precious because he is God's Passover lamb in the New Testament. God appears to Moses as the holy God of the burning bush. The holy God of the burning bush moves all over Egypt on the evening of the Passover. If he sees the blood of the Passover lamb on the doorpost, he passes over that household. However, if he does not see the blood, he slays the firstborn son of that household. The sacrifice of the Passover lamb saves that home. Without that sacrifice, the firstborn son of the home dies. There was an exodus, uh, which is the second book of the Old Testament. However, in the New Testament, there is a new Passover lamb. The next day, he saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John verse 29. Jesus is our Passover lamb without blemish or defect. The Victoria Cross is awarded to Commonwealth soldiers who show brave courage in war. The first Canadian to be awarded the Victoria Cross in World War II was Sergeant Major John Robert Osborne for his bravery and courage in Hong Kong on December 19, 1941. This is his citation for the Victoria Cross. At Hong Kong on the morning of 19th December, 1941, a company of the Winnipeg Grenadiers to which Company Sergeant Major Osborne belonged became divided during an attack on Mount Butler, a hill rising steeply above sea level. A part of the company led by Company Sergeant Major Osborne captured the hill at the point of the bayonet and held it for three hours when, owing to the superior number of numbers of the enemies and to fire from an unprotected flank, the position became untenable. Company Sergeant Major Osborne and a small group covered the withdrawal, and when their turn came to fall back, Osborne single-handed engaged the enemy while the remainder successfully joined the company. 
During the afternoon, the company was cut off from the battalion and completely surrounded by the enemy who were able to approach to within granite throwing distance of the slight depression which the company was holding. Were holding. Several enemy granites were thrown, which Sergeant, Company Sergeant Major Osmond picked up and threw back. The enemy threw a grenade which landed in a position where it was impossible to pick it up and return it in time. Shouting a warning to his comrades, this gallant Warren officer threw himself on the granite, which exploded, killing him instantly. His self-sacrifice undoubtedly saved the lives of many others. Company Sergeant Major Osborne was an inspiring example to all throughout the defence which he assisted so magnificently in maintaining against an overwhelming enemy force for over eight and a half hours. And in his death, he displayed the highest qualities of heroism and self-sacrifice. Such was the sacrifice of Sergeant Major Osborne. His self-sacrifice un undoubtedly saved the life of many others. Jesus, our Passover lamb, did the same. His self-sacrifice on the cross undoubtedly saved the lives of many others. The Passover meal was given by God to the people of Israel to remind them that the angel of God passed over their homes because of the blood of the Passover lamb on the doorpost. In a moment, we will celebrate communion. The bread and the cup signify the body and blood given on the cross for us. We are also saved by the body and the blood of Jesus. God passes over our sins because of Jesus. Amen.